So, I don't have a guillotine, but I went down to Office Max and they have a guillotine. And I spent a whole whopping $2.41 to make three cuts. So, if you don't have a guillotine, uh, I highly recommend you go down to Office Max because they, they did a really good job. Um, I had to make sure that it was even on both sides, uh, the tail and the head. Uh, and yeah, they, she, the girl that was there really listened to me and was very careful and made me check before she cut and it was great. So thanks Office Max. Okay, so we've sewn our text block and we've gotten it cut or we've cut it ourselves so it's nice and even. So now we're going to glue our spine. Um, and what I like to do, my, when I learned this, this was called knocking up the book. Um, you want to make sure that your I'm sorry. You want to make sure that your tail is knocked and then your spine lays flat. Uh, elsewise, you'll have a wonky book. Um, and also, so that you don't get glue all over your text block, I like to put wax paper in the first and last leaves. And that just also, it just keeps the whole thing clean. So, tail. Go ahead and knock this up again one more time. Um, and I would say it's more important for the spine to be straight than the edges because you can always go and cut the edges again later. Um, I think this is going to be straight enough for my use, but if you're not comfortable with it, you can always, like I said, go back and cut it again. So then um, I, don't I don't know where my other artist board is, so I'm using a stack of heavy books to weigh this down. And then what I like to do, I like to get my brush wet. Um, it's what we call a thirsty brush. And let me go ahead and do that real quick. So I've gotten, I dip the brush in water and then I kind of sque squeeze some of it out with a towel just so it's, the bristles are a little bit damp. It also makes it easier to get the, the glue out of. And I'm using Sobo, which is, um, neutral. It's not, you know, an acidic glue that's going to hurt your paper over time. So I'm just going to go ahead and squirt some out. This one's been in the garage for a while, so hopefully. Oh! <laughs> and depending on the size of your book, you may need various amounts of glue. Um, I don't know. I don't use very much in gluing the spine. Okay. So I don't just glob on a bunch of glue. I kind of grab a little bit at a time um, and pull away from the puddle, essentially, um, just so that there's a little bit of glue in our brush. You can always go back and get more. Okay. So first, um, I'm going to leave my tails out. And then just start brushing on glue into the spine. Put some more glue here. And it's okay if you get a little bit of glue here where our end sheets are going to go. And this um, this is an exposed spine binding, so you're not going to see it. But um, try not to get glue on the head and the tail. Um, so you don't want to go back this way when you're gluing the tail end. Be very careful to pull away from it. Yep. Get some more glue here. I'm going to make sure you want to get in between your signatures here. And we weigh it down because you don't want the folios to slip around while you're gluing because then you might end up with a wonky shaped spine and that would not be good. That's a bit way too much. It's okay. Just use it to smooth it out. And 
what I like to do, I kind of, I push my tails in between to the signatures here. And then kind of just go ahead and glue over it. And what that does is it hides your tail. It doesn't, you don't want a loose tail flopping around on the outside of your book. You want it to be stuck to your spine really good. So go ahead and cover it. And then you leave it, I want to, you know, usually it's best to leave it overnight for at least 24 hours you leave it, but um, depending on the humidity, you may need to leave it longer or even shorter if it's very dry where you are. Um, I've left a book before for 12 hours and it seemed to do fine, so it's pretty good. Okay.